Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Roshi is here. Today we're taking a look at Talir Combo. Um, with one of the later patches, we got access to another one drop that gains us power. Uh, this opens us the door to uh, completely skip over the two drops entirely and just try and ramp a one drop into a three drop into one of our like thick five drops. Um, I'm not going to go card by card this time. I imagine a lot of you have seen Talir combo by now. If not, I'll just briefly discuss the combo. You play Talir, um, and then while Talir is in play, you can play a Dark Return and bring back Aurelian Merchant. The Merchant will have Destiny, so it'll go into play immediately after you draw it, thanks to Talir. Then you grab Kairos. Uh, you can't cast him, but because, once again, we have Talir, Kairos will actually have Destiny, you'll draw him, he'll go into play, you'll draw six or however much if you've got a bigger guy on the board, but six is usually enough. Churn through your whole deck, um, while that's happening you are basically drawing power and spells, uh, your hand will end up with like a bunch of Twilight Hunt, Sending Agents, Curtain Calls, Dark Returns, Time Etchings, and power, and your board will just fill up completely. Um, you'll basically pop off, and in the process, each unit you draw is going to deal damage to your opponent's board or face. Even if they've got Aegis, um, this combo will just generate so much value that they can't win. Uh, you can also do it with time etchings. If you've got four time, which by the time we play Talir, we always will have it, um, go ahead and play Talir, exhaust it with time etchings, and just combo off of Kairos. You don't even need to have an Aurelian Merchant in the Void to do that. Um, the merchant's just kind of there for some extra market access and uh, consistency. So uh, other than that, we've got kind of Tokus to basically be Valkyrie Enforcer, bait against Horu Kira. Uh, if they don't have Valkyrie Enforcer, they will just lose the game. Um, Ixtal and World Bearer Behemoth serve as our very powerful um, plays that we can make as early as turn 3 in this deck. Uh, you'll have to have a pretty decent power curve out and, you know, one drop into three drop into five drop, but these guys are very good at that. They both generate power themselves. Uh, Ixtal is actually very solid in this combo because by the time Kairos comes down, Kairos actually gives you plus six power, so you're probably going to be sitting around like 15 or so power um, minimum by the time Ixtal is coming into play off Kairos. So that's 15 damage to the face. Uh, that's going to kill a lot of people and a lot of things. Uh, World Bearer Behemoth is great with Twilight Hunt, and uh, getting the power off of both of these guys also helps ramp us into our next guys. Uh, Grodov Stranger enters and gives you the power immediately, which is very helpful, um, which you can immediately use to Twilight Hunt and uh, kill something, draw a card, and maybe shuffle some voids. Um, we are main decking Talir. You often see some of these decks sideboarding it, but Talir is just quite a good threat on its own. Um, the days of turn to seed have kind of, you know, occasionally people are playing it, but there's not too many. And uh, if you have it in the market, you have to play way more merchants just to like reach it from the market and do that. And it plays more like a combo deck than what I want to do. And this deck's basically a mid range deck that can combo if it needs to. Um, it's not. I mean, you will combo whenever you have the option because it just ends the game. But until that happens, you're just you're slamming threats and you're just playing things. And uh, when the dust settles, if you've got nine power and a Talir and one of your combo pieces, you should just win the game. Uh, so that's pretty much the deck for the sideboard. I have Swirl the Sands. This is for any sort of relic or curse they could play on us that stops us from like messing with our void or comboing out. And uh, any pesky flyers we can deal with with this. Ancestral Oasis is just extra ramp. Um, sometimes we expect some of our uh, early game drops to die. So like let's say I go Initiate of the Sands into Aurelian Merchant, and I expect my opponent to kill one of these guys before the next turn. I'll actually grab Ancestral Oasis. This way I can slam this, and I'll get plus two power, and I'll still be able to play a five drop or a six drop. So this is one of the first grabs I usually take. Uh, next up is Grodov's Burden. This will end games on its own if it is not dealt with. Um, it is an insane value engine, and with all of the ramp we have, once you get to the point where you're activating this one or two times a turn, the game's going to end very quickly. 
Uh, Nash comes down and deals with our issues of not really having any other outs to flyers. Um, we can Twilight hunt them, and we can send an agent them, and like try and race them with Curtain Call. But uh, in the main deck, we don't have any flyers at all. So Nash comes in and just completely shuts down that weakness. Whatever they've got on the board is just set back to the Stone Age. And uh, yeah, and I guess I don't need to talk about Kairos. Uh, he's an auto-include. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my YouTube. Follow me on Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Roshi is here. Link down below. Join my Discord if you want to talk to me uh, outside of the comments or outside of my stream. I'm often on there posting memes, uh, commenting on deck ideas, and just chatting about updates and Eternal and all kinds of stuff. So um, that's enough of that. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a fantastic day.